Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today we're going to have to do some work to my old K&T 2H uh, horizontal milling machine. I've had this machine probably going on 10 years now. And um, it's been a good machine, but it's definitely one that has seen a lot of use over the years. It's got a lot of wear in it in different places. Uh, it's probably really a candidate for being rebuilt. Just haven't had the time to do it yet. And um, But today what I'm dealing with is I've been working on a job and I've got a problem with my um, my my rapid reverse and my feed mechanism over here on the table. Something's kind of hanging up and not working right. Now, if you followed my channel for a long time, you may remember, it's probably been four or five years ago, I tore into this machine uh, with an attempt to fix some issues with the rapid traverse. Uh, we improved it, but I really needed to go back in there and make some other changes. It was kind of a trial and error type thing. There was some there's a spring-loaded clutch pack in there, and I changed the springs out, put in some stronger ones, and really needed some even more stronger ones than what was in there, um, and just haven't done it because I've been able to work around it. If you've seen me move the, the table on this, sometimes you'll hear that that clicking noise. That's that uh, clutch pack in there slipping. And uh, like I said, I made an attempt to repair it one time. We improved it greatly but uh, still needed to take it a step further and I just haven't done it. Uh, today we're tearing into it because I've got some issues going on that's really preventing me from using the machine now uh, and it's all in that same area so we're going to be tearing back into this and seeing what we can do to fix it so I thought you guys might like to go along for the ride so let's get at it. Step one is I need to take the belts off looks like I need to replace the belts. Now that motor is uh, just kind of on a pin that pivots down and it kind of hangs and that's how it puts tension on there. So I'm just putting a pry bar up underneath the bottom of that motor and that will allow me to uh, slip these belts off. And I think while we got them off, before I put this machine back in use, I'm gonna order me some new belts. It's supposed to have three on there, there's only two, and they're kind of ragged. So next step is uh, need to take uh, this mechanism off here. This is a, uh, a clutch. This is uh, the, the clutch pack that basically powers the uh, spindle on the machine. Uh, when you move the handle up top, let me show you how this works. So it moves that bell housing out and engages, uh, it, it free spins with the motor, but when you do this, basically it's, it, it moves in some pieces in there. Now the, the whole assembly spins. Hopefully you can see that. You'll see when I get into this a little bit further that, uh, there's two power takeoffs on this thing. One, okay, I got that out of there. One of them uh, spins all the time, and then the other one only spins when you engage the clutch. So let's go ahead and remove this castle nut. This castle nut has got a, that pin that we just cut out in it, and that's made where you can adjust it. It's not necessarily where you want to just tighten it up as tight as you can get it. You want to adjust it so that clutch uh, engages in the right spot. And uh, then you put that pin in there and it prevents it from coming out any farther. Next step here is we want to remove this uh, little piece here. This has got the bell housing on it. Uh, when, and there's clutch packs behind this that uh, enable you to engage and disengage the the main spindle. Now it's uh, adjustable and the way you adjust it is, is you put this little pin here and it screws on and off. I'm going to pull that pin out. That pin engages in a gear behind it. Here we go. And it screws off. Here we go. 
All right. And we'll take the outer pressure plate off here. There's some springs and pins in there that hold everything in place. And this is my clutch pack. It's got a clutch lining on both sides and then there's another pressure plate in the back back there. So to get this whole housing out, I've got to get to some bolts that are behind this ring. So we're going to pull that on off. I'll just use my uh, impact driver here to make short work of it. And that should release that. And we will come in here and remove those as well. And this whole housing just slides right out. So next to get access to some stuff in here, I need to take this little rail off. This is a, a protector that goes along the front. Some little slides go up and down in it. And also there's a trough in here that your coolant goes from your coolant pump. There's a uh, screw down here in the bottom that holds it in place. And there's uh, two bolts up here that also hold it in place. So I'm going to cheat here a little bit. I'm just going to take this uh, fitting off the top right here and I can kind of bend this over toward me and just slide it up and over that pipe. And uh, I'll get a pipe wrench and I'll just take that pipe off down there uh, just to get it out of my way. Here we go. All right. So next there's this housing right here. This is uh, basically what drives, goes up to the knee. Uh, it slides up and down. These, uh, there's little tracks in here that move up and down as you move the table up and down. These are splines that go into a 90 degree gear. Um, and these are turning. One of these turns all the time when the motor's running. One of them only turns when the spindle's engaged. And uh, that's what powers, basically transfers the power up into the knee. We need to take this cover off so that we can uh, start disassembling this. So let's go ahead and pull all these uh, screws out. And that's a shorter one. All right. These are just socket cap screws, if I remember right. There's one. So there's two of these cap head screws on the front here, two here, and then there's also two in the back on this one and two in the back on this one. And I remember from the last time I did this, the ones in the back are a pain in the rear to get out. Now you know what? There's two bolts here on the side that go in there too. Let me get those out. Like there wasn't one in the bottom. Let's see what happens now. Now, let's see if we can 
get this cover off. Feels like it may come. There's an alignment pin that aligns it over here that makes it kind of difficult to get off even with all the screws out. There we go. So there are two plates up under the bottom here. I have taken those nut or bolts out of the bottom of those. I'm just letting those kind of drop down. But you can see the gearing in here, how it powers and transfers this 90 degrees over to the knee. So again, one of these shafts turns all the time. One of them turns only when the spindle is engaged. Um, Got a little bevel gear that goes to another bevel gear that turns at 90 degrees over into the knee. This one here, you got a gear that feeds a, another gear. I think this is for the rapid. Uh, maybe not, I can't remember which one, but there's a bevel gear here as well that feeds over. This is just an idler gear in between basically. Uh, but now when we take this next piece out, all this gearing just kind of comes out with it. We're gonna leave all this stuff just kind of on here. It doesn't, will. I think I will need to take this uh, piece off the front here. I gotta remember how to take it off. That's just, uh, as the, the knee moves up and down, uh, there's some guards here that protect it and keep dust and stuff out. But that is attached here. I'm gonna have to take that off. I believe that we are ready now to take this gearbox here out. So there are, again, a series of bolts holding this in. I'm going to go ahead and take these out. Ooh, that one's got oil behind it. I'm going to put that one back in. I might have to drain this uh, crankcase before I pull this off or I'm gonna have a mess. And I was thinking uh, a little while ago that as long as I was taking all this stuff apart, it'd be a good time to change the fluids. So that's what we're gonna do. This is the drain plug. I got a five gallon bucket here and we'll just drain that oil right out of the case. The oil actually doesn't look bad. But um, it's usually good to change the oil in these things about once a year. And I know it's been at least four, if not five years since I changed the oil in this one. Of course, I'm not using it every day, so uh, maybe not quite as critical. All right, I'm going to cap her back off. I'll put that bucket someplace where I won't trip over it and spill it. Because that's what I would probably do. <laughs> All right, here we go again. Go ahead and take that bolt on out now. And see, it looks like there is a socket cap screw back there. I think that these three screws here have to come out as well. I'm gonna swap over to a screwdriver head here. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that goes all the way back into the case. All right, there's two more screws kind of tucked in back here and I'm going to go ahead and get these out. There's one of them and another one right down here. And 
and I believe that we have all the bolts holding this housing in place off now. So next thing to do is to get it off. There are two dowel alignment pins, one at the top and one at the bottom. And right next to that is a socket set screw that just goes in here. And you can push on that and it will help get that off of the uh, dowel rods. I think we're good. and it's ready to come out all right guys we can see the back side of this uh, gearbox now and again this is all about uh, transferring power from 90 degrees to go down and it transfers to the end but what we're going to be working on is this gear here this has actually got a clutch pack in it and uh, we need to put some stronger springs in that clutch pack so um, there's a retaining pin holding this on. Let's see if I can get that off. Here we go. Now, this should just come right off of there. Let's put a block of wood up underneath here and get a little pry bar up underneath it. Yep. All right, there's a Woodruff key holding this uh, clutch pack on. Just clean that up a little bit. And now I need to take this clutch pack apart. I've been in this before and um, we'll see what it looks like when we get in there. But basically what I need to do is, is press down on this with a good bit of force get this retaining pin out and then it should uh, let up. So uh, let me figure out how I'm gonna do that. I put this in my vise and kinda clamped it. So that should keep it together while I hopefully can get this retaining pin knocked out of here. to very carefully open this up. There's springs all back there in the back. All right, we did that without exploding, that's good. All right, let's take a look at this clutch pack now. So um, we got the top plate up underneath that. Got some retaining pins that just keep this thing aligned. There's some um, um, friction materials is like what you'd find on a clutch plate or set of disc brakes or whatever. And um, that rubs against the plate behind this. And we got all these springs in here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull them all out. And then down in the bottom of this are a bunch of ball bearings. And you can see there's a down here in the bottom. So what happens here is you got the ball bearings fit inside of this little plate down on the bottom. There's a spring on top of it. And uh, that basically is um, just pushing, pressing, keeping the friction on this top piece up here. And when you get too much of a load on the machine, it will just basically let that spring push up and push over, over over to the next detent on this piece. And what has happened with this machine over the years, the original springs, well, just a couple things happened. Number one, I don't know if you can see it, but 
it's kind of worn a little groove between each notch where those ball bearings have been sliding over. And um, last time I had this apart, I tried to clean that up a little bit, um, run down in there and just kind of get a good sharp edge on it, but there's only so much I can do. Um, so the next thing I want to do is put in some heavier springs. And I didn't have the original specs, so I was kind of guessing and I, I, I ordered some springs and decided to go with them and I probably went with a little bit too light of a spring. And fortunately, I ordered some extra springs. Um, I've got to figure out which ones they are, but I ordered some extra ones that are a little bit heavier and I want to rebuild this clutch pack with the heavier springs and that's what we're going to work on right now. Well guys, I got my new springs in. This is from the old ones and it is visibly worn down on, on one side and it's been compressed a little bit. Um, these are the new ones. They're the one inch length. Um, that one's a little bit shorter, but I, like I said, I think it's just from where it's, it's worn down. These uh, new springs are the same coil diameter or, or the material diameter as what I got here now. So hopefully I should have the right weight on these. That's my hope anyway. And um, I'll just mention that I got these springs from Lee Spring. Uh, there's the information sheet on them and the part number if somebody's interested in what I got. Uh, LHP 060D04S is the part number. And uh, I'll also mention that because of the way the price breaks worked out, um, I've got an extra set of these springs if anybody would like to get them from me uh, because they, like I said, they had different price breaks for different quantities. A friend of mine contacted me. He actually got two sets I ordered for him. So I ordered four sets. Uh, so if it, like I said, I do have an extra set if somebody's needing them and uh, I can get you a little bit better price than if you just bought a set of uh, 18. So anyway, here we go. Uh, here's the piece in the bottom, these little uh, detents. There's a ball bearing that fits down in those. I'm going to go ahead and drop this uh, plate over the, over the fixture. There it goes. There's a bronze bushing in there. You can see that that is made to, to spin on this shaft. So I got them lined up. I'm going to drop a ball bearing down in uh, each hole. All right. There are 18 holes on here, and now we'll drop a spring down in each one. On top of that, we have this little uh, pressure plate. This has got some clutch light material in there. There are three um, tabs that fit down inside the springs that kind of line everything up. And I got to move over one to line up on the spline. There we go. And now that right there will press down right on top of that. And um, I've got my lock ring here that'll go on top of there and, and lock it in place. There's a groove that that fits into. Now I'm gonna go out to the museum and use their press to press this on. Last time I did this, I made a little tool that basically is just big enough to slide over that, that um, spline. I bored out a hole and what I did was I put that on top of the ring here, pressed it all down on there. That allowed the ring to expand out over the spline. And whenever I pressed it down to the right place, it would just fall right into that, uh, that groove. So uh, uh, probably not going to film that just because it's uh, going to be difficult to get out there and do that and get my camera set up. Uh, I did that in the previous video, but that is how I did that. So I'm going to run out there, press that in place, and hopefully we'll have our clutch pack all uh, ready to go back into the machine. Well, let's bring you up to speed where we're at. Uh, I did get it put back together, but I had to change my plan. So before uh, I, we used the original clip that came on here, I literally just laid it on top. I had that little chamfer there. I made this little jig last time that has that just slips right down over that stud. It also has a little bit of chamfer there to help line things up. 
and I just pressed on there and it expanded this out when it went down below the snap ring went back in place. But as you can see, it did not go as planned. Uh, this thing turned into a spaghetti noodle. It didn't line up right and uh, we had a mess. Fortunately, uh, I had a snap ring that was the right size for this job. I actually ordered these uh, when I did the job previously and uh, I decided to go back with the original hardware the first time around. But uh, this was, I think, is a, a very fine substitute. The inside diameter is exactly right for this particular piece. This is about, I think this one was like 55 thousandths thick. This is 50 thousandths thick, so it is about 5 thousandths thinner. But I don't really think that that's going to matter. Uh, I think it's going to be just fine. But uh, as far as putting it on, I built this little jig I literally just threw it together real quickly and uh, it allowed me to push down on there but be able to get up underneath this with my snap ring pliers and get in there with the snap rings so anyway that worked just fine uh, this press together it actually was fairly easy to press together probably could have done it on my arbor press here at the shop but I was thinking it was going to be too hard to do with it um, but there we go it is finished and it is ready to go back onto the machine so let's uh, reassemble this and put our milling machine back together All right, I'm gonna give it a try here. So uh, I don't want to adjust my knee up and down or the saddle in and out because I've got it set up for a job. I can test it going this way. And I can tell you, before we did this repair, um, this table, it was just stripping anytime I put the rapids on. So we're gonna just try it out now. I could not do this before. I've got full rapids here, guys. It hasn't slipped yet. Huge improvement. I cannot tell you how excited I am because I have had an issue with the rapids on this machine since the day I brought this thing home and I've probably had this machine now over 10 years. And, uh, I think we got it worked out. I think it's finally fixed and I'm excited about that. Uh, once I get through with this job, I'm gonna run through the paces. Really raising and lowering the knee is probably the, the, the biggest challenge because that's where you got the most weight on everything. Uh, but I'm confident that we've got this machine right now. Uh, it is, like I said, it's never been right since I've got it. But this is a, this is a huge, huge improvement. And uh, with that, that's gonna be a wrap on this episode. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching Watch me tear into this thing and uh, finally get this thing fixed like it needs to be. And I will just say again, I did order an extra set of springs. So if anybody out there is looking for some, uh, give me a holler or you can go to Lee Springs and buy them. But unless you order a bunch of them, you really don't get the price break. So uh, I can get you, I got an extra set that I'll be glad to sell someone, uh, get my money back on them. I'll, I will warn you, they are still, even with the, the discounts, uh, I think they came out to, it was about $6 a spring. You need 18 of them for this machine. So it adds up, but having this machine working right uh, is priceless. So uh, I'm, I'm excited about that. All right, guys, I'm going to get this machine back in production, finish this job out, and uh, glad to have this done. And with that, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and uh, the comments are appreciated, as well as thumbs up if you like what you saw. We'll catch you on the next video.